patents and copyrights is one of the essential, specifically enumerated powers given to the federal government at our nation's founding. The Constitution sets control over patent law as one of the enumerated powers of the Congress. Whenever I'm working on a video project, intellectual property really affects me. From patents in the software and equipment that I use, to the copyrights of what I'm allowed to use for my video. This all goes back to intellectual property. Intellectual property is a promise from the government to legally protect creators from having others copy their content for a limited period of time in exchange for them releasing that content into the market. This is done to spur economic growth and encourage progress. This started back in England with the Statutes of Anne, when it became time to set up a new government. Our founding fathers made sure intellectual property was included. Our founding fathers recognized that in order to overcome the deficiency of labor, the U.S. from the very beginning was going to need to rely on innovation. They recognized that the way you would incent innovation is to provide rewards for it, and so they created a clause in the Constitution from the very beginning to provide a clear reward for innovation. Specifically, it gives the Congress power, quote, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries, unquote. Innovation propelled America to become an economic superpower. During the second industrial revolution, the U.S. economy grew at its fastest rate in the country's history. Infrastructure were created, jobs and new industries were made, and America surpassed Britain become the world leader. All of this was spurred by over 500,000 patents issued by the USPTO. But is our current patent system still supporting innovation? One record, one of many details of a busy enterprise. A lot has changed. So we've gone from an era in which most inventions were made in a single field, like the first patent, to a world in which most invention is very cross-disciplinary collaboration is required. The patent system hasn't been able to keep up. Right now there are about 700,000 applications that haven't even been opened yet. Meanwhile, this fast pace of innovation combined with a misuse of the patent system by some has flooded our court system. In 2011, the Leahy Smith American Vents Act was introduced. Among other changes, the American Vents Act would convert the patent system from a first-to-invent system to a first-to-file system. This would streamline the system by automatically giving the rights to an invention to the first to file it with the patent office, as opposed to having the patent office go back and look for prior versions of that invention in the rare case that someone else invented it first. A detailed debate ensued. First issue, does this fit the constitutional criteria? The intellectual property clause of the Constitution gives the protection to the first to invent. The bill's inclusion of a move to a first inventor to file system is absolutely consistent with the Constitution's requirement that patents be awarded to the inventor. Second issue, can Congress change the system? Some have argued that the first to file provision in this bill violates the constitutional provision giving Congress the power to quote, promote the progress of sciences and useful arts, but does not say how it can or should do so. Congress deciding that awarding patents to inventors who are the first to file is consistent with that constitutional power. With that decided, Congress had to question whether this bill would promote the progress of science. Opponents criticized the bill for the possibility of harming small business. Politicized patent system will further entrench those very powerful interests with deep pockets and lots of lobbying offices. The new system will actually make it easier for small businesses and independent inventors because the new system is very clear and transparent. The new system will enable a true inventor to file a provisional patent application which ensures that that person then has a first access to later patent coverage and to know that, there no, that there's no one else who would be able to later come in and claim superior rights. The bill would eventually pass both houses with support from the USPTO. When Thomas Edison filed his patent for the phonograph, his application was approved in just seven weeks. And these days, that process is taking an average of three years. It's a bill that will 
put a dent in the huge stack of patent applications waiting for review. The combination of additional resources to the USPTO plus a new, more streamlined system has allowed the patent backlog to go down for the first time in many years. And so we made some progress, but we have a lot more uh, work to do. With the explosion of new, copyrightable text, photos, and video, the copyright field, like the patent field, has faced many challenges, mainly online piracy. Well, there are a couple pieces of anti-piracy legislation working their way through the Capitol Hill process as we speak. In late 2011, Representative Smith introduced SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act. When a rogue website is foreign-based and foreign-operated, that's where the Stop Online Piracy Act comes in. SOPA would create a system that would allow the Attorney General to block sites on the domain name system that allegedly support copyright infringement. Supporters of the bill claim that this would help eliminate online piracy. However, the bill has faced much backlash. They start meddling with the domain name system, and that is the fundamental architecture to the net. Opponents have challenged the vaguely written bill that affects sites that, quote, engage in, enable, or facilitate infringement, or have a high probability of doing so, would harm the internet. The bill would additionally allow websites to be sued simply for having these links on their site. What they've said is we're going to criminalize the linking and structure of the internet itself. So if someone posts a copyrighted, a, a copied video, we're going to force the intermediaries, which include Google and many others, the ISPs and so forth, to take the link down. This is known as censorship of the internet links. This would include some of the most popular sites on the internet. For completely monitoring that massive amount of data would be bankrupting. This would cause much damage, for while some may use these resources for harm, there are many, many more who use them for good, legal, and worthwhile purposes. For me, such an action would eliminate some of my greatest resources and means of distribution. Additionally, the provision of making the streaming of copyrighted works a felony would make a project such as this highly dangerous. But there is a problem, but this is not necessarily the right remedy. And unfortunately, such a system wouldn't even work, for one can simply go around it by typing in the IP address. Intellectual property is centered around a balance between small and big, between users and creators. When we view changes in the intellectual property field, we must look at that balance. For how else can we support the constitutional role for intellectual property to promote the progress of science and useful arts?